All right, well, here's, we're gonna do the ribs. Okay. This is my favorite thing on the menu. Um, uh, and I never started cooking ribs until we opened a restaurant, so I didn't even know, I didn't even know how when we opened a restaurant. So, really? Yeah, we catered for several years, but ribs were not a catering uh, item normally. So I had to learn how to do ribs uh, overnight. So, but we use, uh, this is my, my grandpa's dry rub recipe. It's a pretty simple kind of central Texas rub. It's got, um, it's got uh, paprika and smoked paprika. It's got uh, garlic salt, salt, pepper, and dry mustard. So my grandpa's original recipe had MSG in it, but with everybody they figured yeah. out about MSG, but man, it's so good. Uh, we don't, we <laughs> you don't gotta have it. some MSG. You know what, you know, we don't do it now, but I look in everything that you buy, there's MSG in everything. Yeah. And so I almost put it back in there, but I didn't. So it's MSG free. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, we use. We're, uh, we're worried about MSGs when we're eating pork, big exactly. slabs of ribs that's, and briskets. So exactly let's worry about, about the MSGs. Exactly what my wife's always saying. She's like, "Really, babe?" <laughs> <laughs> so um, we use a St. Louis cut rib here that oh. we get, uh, pretty pretty standard. Um, and there's a lot of uh, rub applicators out there in the world, and I've used a lot of them. And this has been the best one I've found so far. It's called. It's by a, a mason jar called a Recap. Okay. I got it off Amazon, but it's got these big holes in there. Oh, that wow. are perfect yeah, yeah. for a rub, but they're not too big. And you can hold a lot. You can any size mason jar you want, you can use. So at home, you can just use a small one and not waste a bunch of stuff. But right. um, seasoning a rib is probably the most important thing outside of cooking it right. Uh, you don't want to over season, you don't want to under season. Right. So we use a clean rib, and then um, the technique is just put it on there across the rib so we get a good even coat. The shake is important. All right. That's beautiful. Unless and that's going to give it a nice color, too. It will. And you get your color, obviously, from the paprika. So, and then what, for me, um, I always give a tilt up and a little shimmy. That knocks the excess off, and there it is. It's beautiful. So, you got a nice, even coat on there. And uh, so, how long do you smoke your rib? All right. I smoke at 250. I smoke a rib for two hours and then we wrap in foil and then go for another hour to 15, hour 15 to an hour and a half, depending on what the pit's doing temperature wise. Okay. So if it's running consistent and it's uh, up where we want it to be, an hour and 15 minutes, uh, an hour and 15 minutes, if we get some fluctuation, we'll go over there. So that, that would translate in the backyard as well. So you would want- Absolutely. 250, two hours, yep. wrap yep. it. Do you do anything when you wrap? Because I know like with a three, two, one, you put some butter- Yeah, no, I, uh, I don't. Um, I just wrap and let the, and I, I, I put it back let on- Let the rub do the work. Let the rub do the work. I put it back on the pit, meat side up. Okay. And then when we unwrap, um, I'm looking for about a quarter inch pull off every bone. Uh -huh. If you don't have every bone, you're gonna have you know variances. It's gonna in be pretty ribs. tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what I do actually after that, when we unwrap, I actually put them back on the smoker for about 10 minutes to just firm them up and uh, make anything. If it's wet, it'll dry it up a little bit. Okay. And put a little bit extra smoke on top on the on the on the backside. So. Okay. Now on the backside of uh, uh, the rib, do you pull the membrane off? Because I see this all the time, and there's yes. forums, and everyone's. Get the membrane off, leave it on, get it off, leave it on. So there's always, it's like an argument even about brisket, about trimming the fat. Yeah, fat cap up, fat cap right, down. Right, it's, it's, it's I think people debate. just want to argue. I think you're right. Um, I, do, I do not pull the membrane off. And I think that um, personally, in my personal opinion, it helps the rib stay on the bone a little better. Okay. If you pull the, uh, the membrane off and um, you have even a little bit of of overcooked, your ribs just gonna fall off the bone. The right. membrane helps hold the meat on the bone. Okay. So you know a good, a well cooked rib bites clean off the bone, but stays on. Right. And so the membrane kind of helps hold that meat on there. And I don't know what you gain anyway. I never could figure it out because there's not like there's a bunch of meat back there you're you're having access to. Right. You know what I'm saying. Right. So um, I leave it on, and I also leave it on just for commercial aspect when you're doing 20 or 25 racks at a time. No one's got time to sit there. And peel. Right. You know it's so and I. Um, I just never noticed the difference. So I leave That's it on. That's good to know. That's yeah, good to know. I'll leave it on. Awesome. I can't wait to try some of these ribs and coleslaw. All right, we'll put so, them on the pit. All right.